Hey everybody, so unfortunately I'm out right now with some motor trouble, so I'm unable to fish. It's also been really hot in the Midwest, too hot to musky fish, so I figured now's kind of the perfect time for me to try and make some different content for my channel, and today's no exception for that. Today I'm going to be talking about how to properly handle a musky. I know there's a few people on YouTube that, that have way more experience and credibility than me that have already made this video, but I figured, you know, if I make this video, it's just another video out there for people to see. If I can help just one person handle a muskie better than they would without seeing my video, I think it's you know worth it for me to make that video. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna get right into it. We're gonna start with the basics here. Tools are extremely important. You wanna have the right tools with you. So I have a jaw spreaders. I use this on quite a few of the fish that I catch. It really helps if a fish ever eats a bait deep, you know, you can open up the, the mouth and get at the lure. You can't control how these fish eat your bait. So sometimes it's not always the prettiest thing to do. So having a jaw spreaders can save you a bloody hand and a lot of time and it can just be easier on the fish versus having to keep prying its mouth open to get at your lure. Now, second thing is having a pliers. I carry a number of different pliers with me in the boat at all times, but I would say the one that you, if you're gonna have just one, a needle nose pliers or a, a longer hookout tool. Again, you can't control how these fish eat your bait. This also keeps your hand away from those razor sharp teeth, so it might save you a trip to the hospital by cutting your hand. Lastly, something that I've used before is a scissors. I mean, everybody carries the scissors in their boat as far as I know, but it is, you know, can be useful at times to release a fish. You know, tinsel can get all crazy on you, or I don't know what else, your line can get I mean, weird things happen with these fish. Uh, I've had line like wrap, you know, different places, and sometimes it's just easier to snip that line, makes things easier. Now, as far as big equipment goes, these are things that are extremely important and you should invest in. It's not always the most fun thing to invest in some of this stuff, but it is very important. The first thing I would say is a musky net. The biggest thing about a musky net, though, is the big hoop. These fish can get big. You want a big hoop to fit that fish in there. And then the most important thing about a musky net is that deep netting. So you can drop your net on the side of the boat, leaves the fish in the water. Now the next thing here isn't it super important, but if you are gonna target these fish on a regular basis and be measuring them, then it's something that you should invest in. And that is a bump board. I highly recommend just a musky bumper. They're made specifically for muskies. They do a great job. They're easy to store easy to use easy to read you'll want to wet these when you're going to measure fish so you dip it in the water bring it back in and that might seem a little weird to some people but that'll help keep the slime on the fish carrying and protecting these fish is very important they are a limited resource they're a fragile fish so being meticulous with them being you know very thoughtful with the fish is extremely important oh 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 one more tool that you want to have is a hook cutters or bolt cutters i lost mine so i have to go buy a new one but you can never control how these fish eat your lure sometimes you're going to have to cut those hooks it's just going to be easier to cut the hooks than to try and take it out and mess the fish's mouth up so i've, I've done it a number of times good investment to make now moving on to handling the fish extremely important this is where a lot of people tend to make their mistakes, and I'm just gonna, you know, I'm gonna go through the basics here. So let's say the fish is in the net. I'm gonna demonstrate here with just an old skin mount that I was able to borrow. The most important thing when handling a muskie is keeping the vertical hold to a minimum, and that means holding the fish vertically, obviously. It's not good for the fish. So when that fish is in the water, obviously you do have to hold it vertically to get it out. But the, the most important thing in this step is to support that fish's weight as soon as possible. So I'm gonna demonstrate here, I'm lifting the fish out and I'm not grabbing, I'm not grabbing up here. I see a lot of people make that mistake too where they hold the fish like this. Now you can't see it on a skin mount, but on a live fish, that back end is gonna hang down like this. So the fish is gonna be at this weird bend. Not, a fish doesn't swim like that, a fish doesn't live like that, it's not really, it's not good for them. So, pulling the fish out of the water, the hand goes, I just say, between these two fins back here. And that's gonna keep that fish horizontal. It's gonna support the weight naturally and it's gonna be better for the fish. When you're doing this, I tend to stay near the edge of the boat. This is something Pete Mania touched on in his video that I really liked, but staying near the edge of the boat is important for this specific reason here. The fish will not always cooperate with you. Generally, when you're holding them by the gill, they will relax for you. You'll, able to get your, you'll be able to get your picture, but sometimes they just don't, they start to thrash. Easiest thing to do, 
It's just to let the fish go overboard versus dropping the fish, having it roll around in all your rods, risk getting more hooks in it, risk getting hooks in your foot, risk the teeth cutting you, whatever the case may be. Fish can be dangerous when thrashing around. Just send it overboard. It's not always the most graceful thing and nobody really wants to just toss a fish overboard. But if you had a choice between letting the fish roll around in all your tackle or just sending it back into the water into its home, send it overboard. Now as far as holding the fish goes, I'd say there's two main ways that you can hold a muskie. The most popular way is going to be the way I'm holding it now, which is by the gill. You can see here on the gill here, you have the gill plate and then you have these red things, which are the gill rakers. You do not want to grab those red things because they will shred your hand. It can be a little daunting the first few times you do this, but you want to keep your fingers against the gill plate here, which is this white part and slide it up and you'll reach a stop here. And there's also kind of this musky notch people call it which is right here. Press your thumb against that and it'll feel really natural in your hands. You're able to pin that fish down, hold it vertical and get your picture. The last way you can hold a muskie is the tail grab. This doesn't work as well on bigger fish, but it is a good option um, for smaller fish like this one here. Basically, you're just putting your hand on the tail here. Again, keeping your hand forward in the fish. You're not holding it back here holding it up towards the front. If you guys have any questions about it, let me know down below. If you think I missed anything, let me know down below. I'll be glad to mention it further on. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Hopefully it helped at least one person out there. And uh, hopefully I can be back on the water for you guys soon here. But until then, hopefully I got a couple more videos coming for you. So appreciate you guys checking this out and I'll see you guys later.